Hi, I'm Gary Willis. I'd like to introduce you to my 25th anniversary signature bass from Ibanez. Look at this thing. Let's check it out. One, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> So first of all, I'd like to say I'm extremely grateful and honored to have had this relationship with Ibanez over the years. Actually, we've been working together for more than 30 years. So it all started in the early 90s and the first bass they made for me had this nice silver metal flake finish. So this bass is kind of a throwback to those beginnings. And it was a proud moment for me when we released that first bass. So since the 1950s, bass design in general has remained pretty much the same. I mean, you have your basic elements, and that's wood, strings, and a pickup. Then over the years, we've seen more pickups, more strings, more sophisticated electronics, but the basic elements are still there. To me, what matters in a bass are the detail. We can start with this body. Made of light ash, super resonant, and it's bolt-on to allow more resonant wood throughout the body. And then there's this gorgeous finish. It's called Silver Wave Burst Flat. And that fades to the black finish that's silver stained, so it gives you this sort of icy cool look with a soulful interior. And of course the ramp has the same finish. Then we've got a three-piece bolt on neck, thin and easy to play with titanium reinforcements. One important detail is the deeper cutaway to allow your fingers to stay parallel to the fret lines up around the 24th fret. And yeah, it has fret lines, 24 of them. Two little details you might not notice at first, but you'll come to appreciate are the two strap buttons at the bottom. This makes the bass very stable when you need to lean it on anything. The custom single GWB Bartolini pickup is radius to match the neck. It's a linear humbucker and individual magnet locations shift away from the bridge as you get to the G string, which helps warm up the higher notes. And then there's the ramp, which is also radius to match the neck. It gives you a consistent touch from playing over the pickup to playing close to the neck, so you can get different tones while keeping the feel the same. It's also adjustable, so you can control how much string access your fingers need for your sound. Then there's a standard style bridge with 16.5mm string spacing, and this one has that nice looking black and chrome combo. On the bridge we keep the saddle screws short so they don't extend above the top of the saddle. If you're as much a fan of palm muting as I am, I'm sure you'll appreciate this. The electronics are Bartolini's NTBT with a passive pull switch. One important thing to me is there are no mid controls. The mids are perfect on this bass. The fingerboard is ebony, but you can still use round wound strings. The main thing is to be careful how you get your vibrato. The neck is 45 millimeters at the nut, and above that you'll notice these unique tuning machines. I've always preferred a light bass, but it's difficult to balance without having to support it with your right arm. So back in the 80s, I adapted some plastic radio knobs and ended up with much lighter tuners on my bass. Ibanez took a chance on this concept, and after a few prototypes, we came up with this cool triple wing design. The plastic makes the headstock lighter, and as a bonus, they don't get knocked out of tune in a gig bag. It also makes changing strings a breeze. So we put all these details together, and you end up with a bass that's managed to stand the test of time for 25 years. If I'm lucky, I'll get to play this bass another 25 years. Meanwhile, I just want to give a huge thanks to Ibanez for making all this possible, and I'll see you on the next anniversary. I'm going to go to the hospital.